And they do want to see if we can unplug the one that hits the uh, curtain. Sure. Man, this is out of my comfort zone. I'm not talking about engaging with the lighting technician for this theater, but rather directing this whole production. I like being a one-man band, and now I am directing producers, PAs, cam ops for this client that I've been shooting for repeatedly. And they are enjoying this relationship so much that they are now pushing for retainer status. And I typically do not do that. But this might have a really good opportunity for me. And I enjoy the work. So today is rehearsal only. And I am teching out all of the cameras with my buddy Adam, who was helping me uh, do stuff that I should have done a few days ago. We did it. Took, took way too long. But here, let's check a look at, that's ISO 10,000 on the FX3, and then we flick it to 12,800, clean. Go back to noisy, and then clean. So that, the, the issue we were having is the Cinetone base ISOs are 100 and 2,000. But when I put in a phantom LUT, I was wondering if it was going to assume those base ISO levels or use the S-Log base ISO levels of 800 and 12,800, and that's definitely what it uses. So good to know because I don't use this camera often, but I do use it from time to time. So I'm going to go out on a huge limb here and say that there is a quad base ISO, right? Because you have four different native sensitivities depending on which profile you're in. So you could switch those depending on how much light you need or don't need. 100, 2,000, 800, 12,800. I mean, I know I'm wrong, but it also sounds right. Anyways, back to production. Like I said, this is a unique one. We are having a speaker on stage delivering scripts to make it look like it is a live attended auditorium, but it is not. We are hiring extras and just placing them in the front row. We were gonna project a logo into this projection screen, but it ended up clashing. So it took 30 minutes to get that out. Right now, I'm dialing in the backlight just to give an outline for these extras. This is a little too strong. I'm gonna dial this back. But I am the director, right? So I am putting two hours of setup time because I have the choice to do that. And I know how valuable it is when you get to go to a set and work through problems rather than getting rushed. So that's one of the good parts. If I'm in control, then I'm gonna schedule it as I see fit. Sometimes it doesn't work, right? Sometimes the venue doesn't open till this time or the extras can't be here for a certain amount of time. But I, now that I have control over these types of things, those are what is important to me. And I find myself doing these simple odd tasks, which I should not be doing. I should be delegating that because that is what slows down the entire production. But as someone who's used to being a one-man band, that's just where my mind goes to. If I see something wrong, I try to fix it. Now that I can assume a different type of role, I need to act like that role. Okay, got it. <laughs> As someone who literally strives to find the path of least resistance, you see it in all of my vlogs, all of my gear choices. Whenever I show up to a job, I want to be efficient, fast. How many of you put yourself voluntarily in positions of discomfort because you know of the benefit on the other side? You know, it's going to be a different set of tasks, rules, mindsets, and and it's going to pull different things out of you. And maybe it's not the exact way that you would prefer to operate. Like for me, I like to just be a singular cinematographer, just a DP for hire or a one man band. But when these more complex types of jobs or roles that I don't traditionally do come about, I also know I can do it. Um, whenever I've always found myself when there is an open leadership position and no one's stepping up, I will naturally step up. But if there is someone who is adamant about directing this ship and that allows me 
to kind of tunnel vision and be a craftsman in the role that I like, I like that position too. The scope of this job was very easy and we wrapped up. It was just a one and a half day shoot, enjoying a little time in South Florida before going back to Orlando. I don't know what it is, but I do not have one free day in April. Every single date is occupied. So I was really glad that I could get two of these consultation calls taken before I left. And so I think that what you're doing is like really cool. And um, I'm excited to kind of see where it takes you and you know the rest of the people that are involved. I appreciate it, man. A consistently repeating scenario I see is people have the technical ability and the knowledge to be doing higher level work, but they are being limited by their network and their reach. Now, I don't have all the answers. I'm not a fortune teller, but I am able to share alternate perspectives and give an authentic dialogue of what has worked for me and what has worked for my peers. One of my most effective ways is word of mouth, but not from clients. It's from crew members, the people that you work with, the people that you have to trust. So I'm stepping into an Airbnb right now because when I worked with Adam on that job yesterday, he said, do you want to be a PA on this job I have coming up in Jacksonville? Absolutely. Packed a bag and we're on the way. Getting Thai food the night before the shoot, but I just had a pre-production call with my new doc character. I referenced it in the last vlog, and I said this guy might be interested in it. He sounds super down. Um, he's a, a drummer, a baker, a BMXer. He's got all these different sides to him, and and he's open to talk, like to be vulnerable, to express himself. And that's the biggest quality that I want to find with a doc character. So I am, I'm pushing this doc idea forward. We're definitely moving forward. And, uh, and I, I can't wait to see where it goes. I will keep updating on here, but doc idea is in the bag now. This is a cool moment. All the people that are on this job are sourced from my Orlando Filmmaker Meetup. We've all been able to share jobs, hire each other, be above, be below in the pecking order. And it's just great to have this community because like I've said before, there's so many people who are already in the same area. They just don't know each other. So take this video example. I rarely get to see the final deliverables, but I was the gimbal op for Vipul Bindra. He was the one who has taken me to Vegas a few times with Emmanuel. And it's just nice that we can all share its community over competition. And that concludes the nerdy videography portion. Now on to a display of low-level jujitsu for myself. And I got Emmanuel to come out. Different Emmanuel. But he's been looking for a new gym. So it's really nice to work with someone on production. Here, I try to toss him over. And he's like, no, nah, you got to step in front. That's how you do it. But I didn't land on the bottom. But... It's just nice to work with someone in VR, videography and then uh, do something completely different. And it doesn't look like much, but I am doing way better than I was before. I uh, actually got to get to the back for a second. It's nice to roll with someone my size. And also, every time I post these clips, there's a ton of people in the comments who are uh, giving their feedback and how they also do some type of combat sport. So it's really cool to see, you know, the, the different sides of all of us that we have, because I don't know about you, but if I had to do videography all the time, I'd go crazy. This type of scrambling, I try to go for the outside trip. Again, I got momentum used against me. This type of scrambling is, is the stuff that I'm very used to because as a skateboarder my whole life, you fall a lot. You you learn how to uh, get out of situations and that's the part that really connects with me. The only thing is I just get so tired and exhausted and my neck hurt the, hurts the next day. But this is all very, very fun. Let me know if you guys do combat as well.